without eating, we can survive for 30 days. Without drinking water, we can survive up to like 11 to 13 days. But without the oxygen, we die in three to five minutes. And yet, people don't really see the importance of the breathing. Breathing is all about expansion, expanding our mind, expanding our organs, expanding our movement, circulation. Everything is all interrelated with the expansion and contraction. And the coming to the core of this uh, movement, it all linked into the breathing. Is the most important intervention for our health something that we're not even looking at? Breathing. Yes. And and to I what level? The, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I've I'm up to this date. I'm so surprised that uh, most people who are in the health and wellness don't really think about the breathing too much. So just uh, from the biological perspective, without without eating, we can survive for thirty days. Without drinking water, we can survive up to like 11 to 13 days. But without the air, without the oxygen, we die in three to five minutes. And yet, people don't really see the importance of the breathing. And breathing is not about just uh, breathing through your lungs, you know. Breathing is all about the expansion, expanding our mind, expanding our, like, organs, expanding our movement, circulation, everything is all interrelated with the expansion and contraction. And the coming to the core of this uh, movement, it all linked into the breathing. Mm. So, so when you say we ain't breathing right, are you, I mean, I feel like I'm breathing and uh, I ain't dead yet, right? So what, do you, what does breathing right even look like? How are we supposed to feel and what are the benefits when we know that we are breathing right? Okay, so uh, in average, people breathe about 20 to 22,000 times a day. And think about you're doing a bicep curls, right? If you do three sets of 10 of a bicep curl, your bicep will become really strong and tight. But imagine you're doing this for 2,000 times a day, you know, 24 seven. Then bicep will become really tight. You won't even able to expand. Same thing. Our main respiratory muscles that we have to breathe is through your, our diaphragm. But because of our lifestyle, because of the stress, we are just uh, surrounded by so much stimulus and that upregulate our sympathetic system, which is fight or flight. Because we're so stressed out, people start becoming more uh, habitual mouth breather or the neck breather. So always tensing up their neck so much. And because of our vagus nerve, that's uh, regulating our parasympathetic system, which is in right at our neck, gets uh, compressed. And because of that, body people don't know how to calm themselves. How do, I don't know. They don't know how to down-regulate the sympathetic system. That's why circulation starts to be poor circulation, poor sleep, poor digestion and mus muscle tightness, everything is all interrelated because of, because of the poor breathing. Mm. And, and we think about, you know, if we're suffering with digestive issues, which are downstream, we, we, we go to the gastroenterologist and they check us out and they might give us heartburn medication, right? Or, or, or we just go pick up something for our gas or constipation. But what you're saying is it's more upstream and it can be right at the neck where we're breathing improperly that our neck is so tense that it's impinging on the vagus nerve. Is that what you're saying? Yes, 100%. You're, you're 100% right. It, so as so, we do, mm -hmm. go ahead, go ahead, Josh. I know, I know you had some. Okay, so as we do this, we have this vagus nerve mm -hmm. impinged. Our neck muscles are tight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, how... How do we start re-regulating our breathing, not bringing up our shoulders, not tightening our neck, pulling with our scalenes? What do we start doing? And how does even, it's so funny that I'm asking this, how oh, does normal okay. breathing look? So, so to understand the, what the breathing is about, is about we have to first understand what's made up of our human body. You know, Our body is made up of six subsystems, muscle, 
organ, circulation, emotion, articular joint, and nervous system. And these are all interrelated to, through the breathing, meaning if people are so used to breathe through their uh, neck so much, they don't know what it feels to have a like proper diaphragmatic breathing. So I think the first, the biggest uh, thing for people to understand what's a proper breathing is, is that they have to find the practitioner or the someone who really understand the breathing so that they can be guided. Hmm. You know, it's because like, it, uh, like I said, if the person is too tensed up and their pain threshold or the, all the threshold is uh, upregulated to the sympathetic states, somebody needs to guide them, bring them to the radical parasympathetic states so that they understand what it feels to breathe through the stomach. So, yeah, I think that's the first thing. Okay, we're going to take a little pause from the podcast for a moment. I'm going to talk about one of my favorite products ever. Do you know that 70 million Americans have chronic sleep issues and about 50% of Americans deal with sleep deprivation? One of our favorite brands, Ned, is here to help you with their incredible new product. It's called Shaddai Chai, and it's been inspired by 5,000 years of ancient healing tradition and is Ned's biggest launch to date. Now, what is it? It's a mellow super blend latte for sleep that combines adaptogens amino acids, functional mushrooms, and magnesium. It's got the best ingredients out there, and it's wrapped in a heavenly masala chai-inspired spice body. It doesn't just set you up for an amazing sleep. Ingredients like chaga and reishi and ashwagandha, they're deeply nourishing to your body so you can get a ton of additional benefits. Now, what I love about Ned from the beginning is that they share all of their third-party lab reports. It's a very transparent company from who farms their products all the way to the extraction process. And Shadai Chai doesn't contain any CBD, caffeine, melatonin, which can make a lot of you drowsy out there, or any dairy. The way that I use it is about an hour and a half before I go to sleep, maybe two hours. I brew some warm almond milk, mix it up with the Shaddai Chai. Sometimes I put a little cinnamon, sometimes I don't. And then that opens a door for my night ritual so I can really start winding down. This is when my phone is off, my TV is off, the overhead lights are off, the Himalayan salt lamps are on, and then I'm moving into a calmative state with my nervous system and going to sleep. So I want you to check out Shaddai Chai. It's not just if you have sleep issues, it's about getting the best sleep you can. And it can help revolutionize your sleep. You're gonna get 15% off with the code DRG. I want you to go to helloned.com slash DRG and you're gonna enter the code DRG at checkout. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com slash DRG to get 15% off in the sweetest of dreams. It's been about a year and a half I've been using AG1 pretty much every single day. I just went to Burning Man and I had a bunch of AG1 packets packed up, 10, about 10, 15, so I could share them with friends to know that I'm getting all of the nutrition that I need, especially being up and out and about all day. AG1 is a daily foundational nutritional supplement that supports your whole body health. And we got a discount code for you. Over here with Heal Thyself, and you being the listener, the loyal listener for so long, you get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash heal thyself. Now, it's an important drink because it's a science-driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, whole food source nutrients. AG1 delivers comprehensive support for your brain, your gut, and your immune system. And if you're like me, you hate taking millions of supplements. I, I do. I hate swallowing, and I get a stomach ache when I eat too many of them. And I love AG1 because I cover all the nutritional bases with one delicious scoop. Now, since drinking AG1, I've noticed just feeling better overall, better immune health, better energy. I don't get sick really at all. I feel good and I'm pretty focused throughout the day. So if you want to take ownership over your health, go to drinkag1.com slash heal thyself. That's drinkag1.com slash heal thyself. Go check it out. Second thing. We're living in the state where everything is all like over stimulus. So we have a five senses in our system. What we hear, what we see, what we smell, what we touch, what we taste. 
these are the all five senses. But so many people, even when they eat, when they breathe, when they see, they're multitasking everything. So we're not focusing on each sensory system. So like uh, in order to go back to the breathing, the first thing they have to focus is uh, bring back to the mindfulness of the each senses. What they see, what they hear, what they smell, what they test, what they touch, they have to first become mindful. And then understand what it, like touching the table, what does it take, like feel like? And how does that like affecting their breathing? Mm. So everything we have to go back to mindfulness of the their sensory system. Yeah, so it sounds to me that it's an easy barometer because one, it's free. How, when we're connecting to our senses, how is that affecting our breathing, you're saying? So let's say, for example, I'm in a room and I hear music, is my breathing changing? If I'm in a room mm. and I see a bird fly by outside the window, how is my breathing changing, right? If I'm about to eat and I can smell the food, is my breathing changing? If I'm tasting it, mm -hmm. is my breathing ta changing? It does the fork against my fingers, is my breathing changing? So mm -hmm. what, what, what you're really saying is how to bring presence through our, se our senses to bring us back into that parasympathetic state, correct? Yes, yes, 100% correct. And what's, what's happening as we're activating our senses, presence, and awareness? What's happening as our nervous system is shifting? How is that benefiting? Oh, okay. So, when we are shifting from the sympathetic to parasympathetic states, we're not just talking about the nervous system, but we're expanding our energy field. So, when people think about the body, Right now, our current medicine is to focus on the physical and biochemical like uh, body. But one body that elements that a lot of uh, medicine is neglecting is the uh, energetical body. So our emotion is a part of the like energy. So if we are always sympathetically overdriven, we're always too focused, narrow down, tunnel vision. But once we go into the radical parasympathetic states, our peripherals expand, our energy field expands, then that we can be able to accept this new energy, new vibes, and then we become more, um, yeah, open to uh, like positive vibes, the way I see. Mm. So essentially what I'm hearing is, as you're in a calmer state with your parasympathetic more activated, more present, more aware, you're receiving more. You're receiving more of that energy that is more in that calm state, which makes sense. I mean, like how many times are we running out of the door, trying to grab our keys, putting on a shoe when we're halfway out the door, forgetting to lock it, going back to lock it, going in the car, driving. And then of course, we're experiencing stressful situations in that state. Right, because we're so our energy is so dense and we're compressing that. Mm -hmm. So, so the same goes is when we're in that peaceful state, we're we're attracting in many ways more peace. All of a sudden, everyone's sort of driving slower on the road or seemingly driving slower on the road. Right, all of a sudden you notice the birds more. All of a sudden you notice the person walking very gently. It's sort of like your awareness is is shifting to receiving on the energetic field. You're saying, yes. Hmm. So. If you look at from the Eastern medicine perspective, we have a yin and yang. Yang energy is about the expressing the energy outside. But in order to express, our body needs to be filled with the energy. But when we just keep express energy out, one day we're gonna come to the point where we got nothing to give, you know? We wanna care for other people, but we got nothing to give. So what I'm trying to say, there's gotta be balance between the in and yang mm. right now the world is all about expressing energy but through proper breathe when we bring our nervous system to the parasympathetic states our body expand the energies instead of uh, giving out we can also receive from the earth mm. that's powerful i mean on an, i mean i fully agree with that on an energetic standpoint it's hard to receive when you're in sympathetic i'm really stressed out because all you're receiving is more stress. Now, mm -hmm. you mentioned different systems in our body. 
And we haven't talked much about the musculoskeletal system, but I want to talk a little bit about how that's integrated with our overall health. And my experience is when I came in, you took a, a full body, uh, basically map of, of how my alignment looks. And then that went into the internal, checking the, the body fat, the weight, all these things. And then we did the energetic. But on the musculoskeletal standpoint, a lot of us are overlooking how imbalances affect our body. For me, example, mm. my shoulder, my right shoulder was lower. Can we talk mm. a little bit about how that, just a, a, a small little imbalance of a shoulder going lower or a hip going higher or a twist too much to the left or to the right, how that affects systems in our body and what systems does it affect? Yes, 100%. Okay, so uh, just talking about the right shoulder drop, right? Our body, somehow, through the homeostatic uh, regulation, we're trying to find a balance. So if something drops, our body needs to try to compensate by trying to rebalance by shifting neck to the left side, right? So one thing drops in order to keep the center of mass to the center, our neck starts to side bend to the left. When that happens is our uh, our spine starts to like uh, st starts to get twisted, especially at the neck level, like C1, like uh, occipital. When the C1, C2 start to shift, that also affecting our jawline, right? So when our jaw gets the shifted, our occlusion or the contact of our teeth starts to get shifted. Then because of that, people start to grind their teeth because they're grinding teeth, they cannot go to the proper sleep, you know, always in the light sleeper, you know, especially nowadays, people using the aura, when I look at their teeth, they're like 80, 90%, they're either grinding teeth or have a sleep apnea. And sleep apnea, people don't see the correlation between sleep apnea or grinding teeth with the drop shoulder. But once I start to introduce, educate why they're interconnected, then they start to, uh, and once we correct them, their sleep apnea or the grinding teeth, sleep issue, all gets a result. And then if we look at the bottom, because of the shoulders starts to drop, hip needs to counterbalance by shifting one side goes up and one side goes down. And because of that, the organ starts to get more compressed. And each organ in the five element theory in the, the the oriental medicine, each organ, not only it has a like, digestive function, but each organ also interrelated with the emotional states. For instance, when our body gets uh, compressed to the one side, it causes uh, too much stress. And then that stimulates our, our adrenal gland to produce more the cortisol, stress hormone. But the building block of the cortisol is the cholesterol. And cholesterol is synthesized from the liver. And besides the producing of cholesterol, liver has like 500 different functions. And if liver is doing too many work at the same time to produce or using too much energy to produce the cholesterol, then it cannot do other functions. That's why liver function goes, starts to go down and liver in terms of emotion is related with the anger. So people who have a deficient in the liver function or liver energy, they become easily get anger or they easily get ticked off. So just by dropping shoulder, increase the stress that affecting the liver function, that also affecting the, uh, the SIBO. SIBO is not just about the fungal infection or this uh, unhealthy gut. It's about the cystic duct, which uh, they go send the bile from the gallbladder because it gets obstructed. What I'm trying to say is that shoulder drop causes like, uh, you know, grinding teeth to the digestive issue, to the emotional distress. Everything is all interconnected. And that's what I wanted to highlight. Something like a misaligned shoulder, left side or mm -hmm. right side, is going mm. to cause downstream 
symptoms. And as you mentioned, yes. it can go from teeth to sleep to digestion to emotional dysregulation, all because we're out of alignment, right? So then mm -hmm. that begs the question, what drops our shoulders? Ah, so it can be a many different things, but uh, 90% of our, so most people, 90% of our population is actually have a right low, uh, right side is a lower for specific reasons. For instance, liver is our biggest organ in the human body. It's uh, located on our right side. So because of the gravity is a favoring on the right side, naturally our body, the right shoulder starts to drop lower. And then second thing is uh, uh, our communication, the language, like development is uh, coming from our left brain. So soon as we start to talk, that just uh, develops our left brain more which, le which is a left brain is uh, dominating our right side. So it helps favoring more of the right side. That's why most people are right-handed because of this uh, development of the left side. And then, the, uh, and then uh, our lifestyle, sedentary lifestyle. If we are moving, then we can start to move left and right side more. But because we're working the fixated the posture, it's just a feed, this a pattern more and more. And then stress, stiffening everything, just uh, lowers the, our right side even more and compressing whatever is the dominant side is becoming more compressed and becomes more tight. Sleep is a foundational pillar to health, period. You have to remember this. And that's the reason I talk about it so much. Because it's so important. And it all starts with your bed. You not only need a comfortable bed, but you want one that's non-toxic, that is not off-gassing. I love the Birch mattress. I think you will too. Now, Birch makes mattresses that are crafted with organic and natural materials that have been sustainably sourced. Their mattresses are free from polyurethane. This is a chemical you want to stay away from. Think about memory foams. This is a chemical that is off-gassing many different particulates, one of which being fiberglass that is detrimental to your health, especially your lungs, especially your immune system. They test for that and other flame retardants that you want to stay away from. Therefore, you're not sleeping on a bed that is off-gassing for the life of the bed. I've had my birch for about two and a half years now, and I love it. What I love most is how fast I fall asleep, how comfortable it is, knowing I'm sleeping in a non-toxic mattress, knowing this company has the highest standard of Green Guard Gold certified to make sure that I'm not being exposed to all of these chemicals for the life of the bed, and that's thousands of different chemicals. With your birch mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial along with a 25 year warranty. The best part of it all is that Birch delivers a mattress right to your door free within the United States. And they also offer in-home setup and removal to make your buying experience as convenient as possible. I love my Birch mattress. As I said, I really do think you will too. If you're looking for a new bed, I want you to check out Birch Living. It is my number one across the board. It's the one I recommend to every single person. Visit birchliving.com slash heal thyself and you're gonna get 20% off of a Birch mattress plus two free Eco Rest pillows. Up until now, there has not been, not been many supplements out there on the market that support a process called mitophagy. This is a natural process of the breakdown of your mitochondria. These are your energy producing organelles in the cell. And for the life of your cell and for a healthy cell, you want to make sure that garbage is being taken out. I want you to think about the analogy of trash piling in your house and no garbage person coming to take it out. This is what happens when you have a sluggish, breakdown and removal of your old and non-functioning mitochondria. This product supports mitophagy and the benefit of mitophagy of an efficient cellular process is more energy, more focus, better muscle endurance, better muscle strength. As we see in the studies from MitoPure, Timeline is offering 10% off of your first order with this. When I discovered the compound in MitoPure called Urolithin A, I was super intrigued, but up to that point, 
it was very hard to find any product that contained it. You can get it in pomegranates, but you're going to need a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of pomegranates and a lot of pomegranate juice. Timeline has created three easy ways to get that therapeutic dose of 500 milligrams of urolithin A. It's very important because after the age of 30, your muscle starts breaking down, your muscle strength starts breaking down, your mitochondria are less efficient. So it's really important as you age to be supporting it. This is one of my top ever supplements to take. It's one I take every single day. They got a vanilla protein powder you can take. They got a berry powder that you can take that mixes into smoothies, or they got soft gels for travel. That's the one that I take. But they also offer a starter pack where you can try all three. Now, MitoPure offers a precise dose of urolithin A, and what's happening is it's upgrading and supporting that mitochondrial function. Now you're getting rid, the garbage man is coming and cleaning out that mitochondria mitochondria and cleaning out that old non-functioning mitochondria and creating the space for an efficient cellular process. You want increase of cellular energy, increase of muscle strength and endurance, and you're going to see that with MitoPure. Now, Timeline is offering 10% off of your first order of MitoPure. Go to TimelineNutrition.com slash DRG, use the code DRG, and you get 10% off. That's T-I-M-E-L-I-N-E-N-U-T-R-I-T-I-O-N.com slash DRG. I recommend trying the starter pack with all three formats and see which one you love the most. Mm. So again, it's multiple things that can be affecting. I mean, you're just saying by virtue of being a human and having a liver and most of us being left brained uh, is gonna mm -hmm. affect our, our right side pretty much. Um, Yes. For, so for the folks who are listening and go, wait a minute, I just looked in the mirror and my left shoulder is a little bit lower. What's going on on the mm. left side then? Okay. That's a very good question. So people who have a left-sided, uh, low, like a uh, lower the left side can be multiple factors. Let's say uh, people who injured their, the, the right foot, you know, had a uh, like meniscus tear or a right, uh, like sprain in the right ankle when they were young and not be able to put, trying to avoid putting the weight on the right side and body is trying to compensate by shifting more to the left side. Even after this injury gets better, body starts to develop the pattern and habits. And if these patterns are not repatterned or addressed, even though there's no pain, our amygdala, is to keep avoiding to put the weight on the certain side. That's why bodies keep compensating to the other side. That's why they start to developing this uh, lower the left shoulder or any other body patterns. Mm. So one thing we, did, we didn't mention, and I wanna ask you, can tattoos affect your alignment, which ultimately affects your overall health? 100% yes. So, Tattoo or any surgery that's uh, to our body is a trauma. And then if there's especially the tattoo, so where we have like very uh, thin skin, like a sensitive area, because of the, the, the pain or the scars, body trying to avoid to put the weight or the, try to avoid the area. So when they try to breathe, when they try to walk, they try to put the less pressure on the area and just overcompensating on the, the other side. And as time goes on, we just develop this uh, faulty pattern and that leads to uh, like poor breathing, poor movement and all this uh, vicious cycle. Mm. So, so the, 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 I want you to just take an extra step. Yeah, so let's say for me, I had a, a rib tattoo Right, and and that's a thin area, very sensitive, known to be one of like the most painful parts. So I had a rib tattoo. So can 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 we talk about sort of, I, I guess, where I got the rib tattoo? You're saying my body didn't want to put any weight or any movement on it. So instead of favoring that side for anything, my right shoulder began to drop more. Is this what I'm hearing right? So because of that right shoulder drop, what what was the chain of things downstream that started to begin? Dr. G, for your case, I remember you had uh, the, the tattoo on your left rib. And because of the, the location of the tattoo was uh, where the, your intercostal, the rib, the breathing muscles. So you are avoiding to contract those muscles. And because of that, your body was sidelined, like side bending to the right side even more 
so that this area don't have to contract as much. But as a result, that uh, you're not breathing or the putting weight on the left side, it led to uh, dropping your right shoulder and your hip, because center of mass was shifting to the right side, your hips started to shift to the right and your left ankle start to roll in. So there was a, yeah. So this tattoo led for your body to shift to the right side and center of mass to the right side and you're overusing the left side and then right, right side of your body was so compressed hmm. and all because of the tattoo. Right, and, and so for me that was, uh, at least on the surface, was creating a lot of uh, tingling down my leg, the compression, the compression was a big thing. Um, uh, but can it, can it affect theoretically then this misalignment, which was personalized to me, but anyone viewing and listening, you can look in the mirror, see what your misalignment may be. Can it cause digestive issues downstream? Yes. So we have a two types of a reflex system. It's a somatic reflex, somatic visceral reflex, meaning our musculoskeletal system is affecting our organs. The other one is a visceral somatic reflex, meaning our organ function is affecting our spine. But if our shoulder gets dropped on the one side, then that the structural change is affecting the, the, the nerves that are going down to the organs and the organs not getting a proper neural signaling. And because of that, that's causing a digestive issue, especially around the, the T10 to like a T12 region is where the phrenic nerve, which is a breathing diaphragm muscle, the nerve is, is uh, you know, spreading. If that area gets compressed, we're not able to get the proper breathing. And because of the diaphragm is not functioning properly, that can lead to the, the heartburn, acid reflux, and that can also affecting the digestive issues. Mm. And that's just by uh, misalignment. Yes. And then one more thing is that the, from the energetical perspective, right shoulder is uh, related with the liver function. And when one side, especially the right side, gets dropped, you know, the gravity is uh, pulling more force on the right side that's affecting too much function on the right side. That's why this uh, stress on the right side can lead to the liver dysfunction. That liver dysfunction is causing the bile, bile disruption. That's why like any uh, SIBO, again, candida, is uh, coming from uh, not be able to digest the fat protein proper way and this gets uh, fermented in the small intestine and leading as uh, like gut disorders. Right, and, and, and we're treating it as if it's just specific and localized just to the gut. Um, but, mm -hmm. but, but in reality, it, we have to think more holistically. And this is why I actually wanted to bring you on the show is because we have to think of our body, our alignment, our muscles, um, how it's connecting to everything else. It's not just you have digestive issues, you need this supplement, you have digestive issues, you know, you need to take this heartburn medication. It's much, much more than that. And, and I hope that at least my, my case where my right shoulder was dropped and we could start seeing the big picture of how it's affecting the different organs and why. So there's other parts of our holistic approach or the holistic approach you take at motion. The O stands for what? Organ. Okay, so the, we, we, we know that the organs, as you mentioned, are connected to the muscle signaling, right? And the muscles to the organs, mm -hmm. right? So, yes. uh, so C then stands for? Mm -hmm. Circulation. So. When it comes mm. to circulation, mm -hmm. you know, in my head, I think about, oh, cold fingertips and, and you know, maybe pale skin. But there, there's more in your perspective for circulation, the things we need to watch out for. So how do we know if we have poor circulation in our body? And what are the, some of the things that we can be doing to have that better circulation and better overall health? Okay. So... Uh the so signs and symptoms that you have a poor circulation is first, you know, like poor sleep quality. You know, like uh, 
if you're getting six to eight hours sleep, you should feel refreshed. But if no matter how long you get sleep, but you still not feel refreshed, that means uh, there's a circulation issue. And grinding teeth is uh, another reason of uh, the symptoms that you have a poor circulation or calf tightness, cold hand, cold feet, you know, and nowadays, especially for women, constipation, menstrual cramp. If people have a constipation or menstrual cramp, is a may like a, that's a key symptoms that the people have a poor circulation. Mm. And very common for so many people. You know how many when I used to really be uh, treating uh, and 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 in practice, a lot of women would come with both constipation and menstrual cramps. Uh, mm. So and and again, a circulation thing. So what are some of the things that we can do to better our circulation? So, uh, at home, the easiest thing that you can do, couple things, is uh, walk on the ground with their bare feet on the like a uh, ground. We call earthing. Like many people talk about the earthing. So, walking bare feet on the soil is the one thing that people can do. Second thing is walk backwards. You know, people. You know, from the day we born and as we start to develop walk, we are just, uh, you know, we just walk forward. That's why we just tend to overdevelop our quads, our like calf. But what we have to do is that uh, we have to start walk backwards so that we, our muscles on the back also can be strengthened or balanced. No one really ever talks about walking backwards, um, mm -hmm. but we think about the balance. It, it sort of makes sense, like the importance of that. Now, we're getting to my favorite part of uh, the acronym MOTION, and it's the E, the emotional mm -hmm. part. Yes. What role do emotions play on our overall health? First and foremost, general question, but I want to know what your take on it. Nowadays, the emotion is the most important elements that affect our whole health. I really believe 21st century from now on, all these uh, disorders will be coming from the emotional distress. It's a powerful statement. It's a very powerful mm -hmm. statement. So then that begs the question because you work so much with the body. It, it, we talked about body dysfunction actually can be causing emotional processes, or is it the other way around? The emotional processes are really causing some body dysfunction. Uh, so you can, uh, though I see it two ways, but I really see emotional distress is causing a lot of uh, body dysfunction. And when people are under high stress, I think stress is the root of all distress. Like root of all the health issue. When people are in so much worries, anxiety, or sadness, that just upregulates our nervous system. And even though there's no threats, nothing is going on, our body do not know how to relax. And because of that, that just uh yeah, constrict everything. That that leads to so emotional stress causes uh like our circulation to constrict it. And because there's poor circulation, our muscles is not getting proper uh, nutrient or the oxygen. So muscle becomes tight. And because of that, our body tend to favor to the, our dominant side. Most people is the right side or people who had a trauma is just the non-dominant side or this uh, compensation pattern. And that just uh, lead to an increase of muscle imbalance. And that leads to a like a circulation issue, and that leads to a, the digestive issue, sleep issue, and everything, and because of their worriness yeah. or the emotional like stress. I agree, and I and this is exactly what I've seen for so long, and I'm I'm really happy that you're saying these things and, and saying how important it is for the viewers and listeners to go, hey, you know, actually emotions are really really high up there, you know, and something that we need to prioritize first. Um, in the articular joints, you said you mm. mentioned that's the A. A lot of us don't. I mean, I've never done a show on joints and joint health, but how important is that when it comes to us working as a fluid system? Mm. So we have but three receptors. 
One is the extra receptors, which is a five senses. What we see, like a five senses are extra receptors. And then proprioceptor is the, what the roles of the joint. I'll talk about this, but the last one is the interceptors. It's awareness, our emotional states. You know, who am I? What am I doing? You know, my egos are all interceptors. What that connects the extra receptors and interceptors are the proprioceptors. Our body needs to understand what we are doing. And uh, on our joint, we have thing called mechanoreceptors. At the end range, our joints, let's say we can move from the 80, uh, 180 degrees. The mechanoreceptors are focused, are staying at the almost at the last 10 degrees on each side. And when we don't stimulate those uh, mechanoreceptors, our proprioceptors are not like working the optimal ways. So we only work in certain range, not uh, not getting inducing those uh, mechanoreceptors. Then that's also numbing down our like five senses and also our emotional states. That's why like doing uh, any uh, mobility class that to stimulate the mechanoreceptors. That's why people feel, oh, I feel so great after this uh, stretching course, stretching class, because that's inducing their, the connecting the five senses with their emotions. Wow. So it's so incredible how you just connected our joints to our emotions, right? But it makes sense. And it's all through the receptor system. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. So uh, funny uh, thing is, I got a lot of people who have a hip replacement, the way I see hip replacement people because they cannot sense the hips so much that also leads to the emotional the distress wow wow the connection mm -hmm. between our joints and our emotions something i haven't even looked into um now the nervous system one of my favorites mm. uh as as we know it's affected by so many things we talked about sympathetic and sympathetic and parasympathetic um is there, in your opinion, what is really laying the most amount of stress on our nervous system? Is it just the American lifestyle, the way we eat? Is it overworking out? Is it people being in jobs they don't like? Is it people in relationships they don't like? Like, why are we so stuck in this sympathetic dominance? And we talked about the shoulder drop, but in, in your experience, and I know you see a lot of people coming in and, of, in and out of motion in New York, where, where do we, what do you think? I think uh, two things is a uh, smartphone and then earbuds. I think these are the two biggest uh, factors that I see is affecting our our nervous system to over over regulate it. Mm. Ear it because it, earbuds, mm -hmm. earbuds, huh? Yes. Go on. I gotta hear this. And, I'm excited. Yes. There's thing called binaural beats. What we hear on the right side, what we hear on the left side, is a different. And then it needs to, our, what we hear, and the, the brain needs to process, and then this uh, afferent information that we process needs to go out to the like muscle. But earbuds nowadays have uh, all this noise canceling. Noise canceling uh, technology is great for the listening to music, but this, this, this isolate our body from the world. And because of that, what, like as we walk, what we see, we need to also uh, take the information through our, like the sound. But because th there's a dissociation, brain gets disrupted. Oh, like what they see, there's no, no connection. And what we see, like there's so many stimulus out there, you know, white noise. And then even the colors, like so many TV shows, right? With all different colors, that's affecting our overstimulate our brain. And again, because there's a dissociation of the what we see and what we hear, that's disrupting our nervous system so much. And brain just stop, like it starts getting numbed down. So it's just, uh, yeah, we just don't know how to calm ourselves. Mm. And you mentioned overstimulated so many times. It's it's sort of like a, an attack on our nervous system. But I find it so fascinating when you talk about, and it makes sense, the earbuds 
and how it is sort of noise canceling that which we're so used to hearing, right? Like, so uh, walking in New York City with noise canceling headphones, you want, you're supposed to hear cars honking. You're supposed to hear people walking past you, voices walking mm -hmm. past you. And you're saying because we're not, it's affecting our system because it's a very unnatural state to be in? Yes. Uh, because how our body works, in order to stay in the parasympathetic state, instead of the central focal, like uh, this uh, attention, when we get the peripheral visions, you know, what we hear and then peripheral visions is one that is uh, dominated by parasympathetic states. But because we're so focused and looking at just a monitor all the time, or just so busy just uh, looking at the going to the like walking on the street and this uh, noise canceling, we're shutting all this uh, per peripheral nervous system. And this uh, central nervous system is just too upregulated. And that's causing body, like inhibiting our body to go into the parasympathetic states. Huge block. And how many, how many of us are experiencing that right now? And the cell phone mm -hmm. overall, is your opinion on it just that it's overstimulating? It's too much? Yes, yeah, too much. Also, like I said, energy component is something that a lot of people like neglecting. But 5G, Bluetooth. All this, uh, all this uh, Wi-Fi, these signals are uh, disrupting our like uh, dynamics of uh, our energy as well. Mm. Man, you know, I feel like we could talk for so long because there's so many aspects to our health that sort of. I love that you condense them into really the pillars of what you see, and I'm happy that we got to go over the whole acronym of motion because uh, it got to highlight just how digestible each one is and how we can start optimizing each and while knowing what's affecting them all. So um, as much as we could talk, I know you're a busy guy. You probably have a line waiting outside that glass door. And um, where can people find you first and foremost? Uh, we are located in New York City. We're in the 42nd and Madison Avenue. And yeah, so yep, we're in the New York City. Love it. And it's called Motion, M-O-C-E-A-N. And mm -hmm. um, and the Instagram is what? Motion PT. And I, I, actually, I, I believe it's in Motion. Motion. M-O-C-E-A-N. M-O-C-E-A-N. And then, and then the website? It's uh, motionwell.com. Motionwell.com. Okay. So everyone viewing and listening, if you're in New York I, and, and, you got, and you got the space, the time, and you want to go, go check it out. It's, it's a analysis and experience that you will you would not expect it's really fantastic to really get analytical data about your body in so many ways not only from the alignment standpoint but internally and even as we were talking about you did the energetic one on me and it was so funny it was like what emotions are you do you, you are you repressing and i said i feel like anger and fear are the deepest ones for me and that's the one that the the map showed on me and you broke it down and you wrote down all the things that are connected. And I think that's the most beautiful part is connecting all the systems. That's a great talent that you have and putting it into one picture. And of course, it's spending time. You spend about an hour with me uh, just sitting down and talking. And then I got some treatments and it was awesome stuff. So everyone out there viewing and listening, if you're in New York, go check it out. Say Dr. G sent you. You can thank me later. And um, I got to thank you though. Thank you so much, Doc. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know how busy it is over there. And uh, all the love. You really educated us today. Thank you, Dr. G, for having me again. All right, my brother. Thank you, and we'll be seeing you soon.